Hello everybody, Steve here from The Buried Life, and today coming at you live from Korea. If you're watching this live, if you're not, then you will be watching this after it was live. So anyway, the point is we're going to talk about 3D printing today and getting that 3D printing bug. Now, a lot of you know, or maybe some of you don't know, that I got into 3D resin printing, and I've been able to make some pretty cool things there. That's my, that's my little alien dude that I ended up making. He ends up killing it. And yeah, I got the blood and the whole nine yards. Really enjoyed this, and doing a bunch of other figures. I got this guy here, which is, if we can get him kind of... You can see that, but uh, missing a head. But all of these things come into a place of where, yeah, it's fun, it's a hobby. Uh, there's other people that do it as side gigs. There's people that do it for their job, and they end up printing on demand. There are on-demand print centers. So there's a wide variety of people and areas that printers apply to and the different people and their goals and so on and so forth. So with that being said, being a new person into FDM printing, but I'm kind of, a, I'm over a year of being a resin printer and I have the Saturn III Ultra, which is really nice. Matter of fact, I just changed out the FEP. I'm gonna put on a safety screen a protector onto the screen and we're gonna jump back into that and we're gonna print more stuff and paint more stuff. But with that, getting into the FDM printing, which is the fused des fuse disposition material, FDM printing. In other words, you have a big spool that kind of looks like plastic. And usually it's about 1.75 millimeters for that material. It goes into a machine and the machine head heats that plastic up until it melts and then it's pushed through and out a nozzle, which usually is can be anywhere from like 0.1 to 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and or what is it, 0.8 or something like that. Anyway, it, it, it ends up, it, it kind of poops wet, hard, wet, hard plastic? No, wet, hot plastic onto a base and it sticks there and then it does one layer and then it does another layer, another layer, another layer until it ends up producing an item that you want it printed. And of course, it's gonna have some fans blowing and next thing you know, boom, you've got your, your your little product, whether it's, you know, I did this on resin, but you can also do on, on FDM printing. So yeah, the larger the nozzle size, generally the more stuff you can print and the faster you can print, but if you want more details, you're gonna to have to go down in size for your printing nozzle. And most printers ship out with a, what is it, zero, 0 0.04 or 0 0.4, whatever it is, uh, 4. And that's kind of the standard. Though some people are looking at getting smaller nozzles, larger nozzles, but I'm kind of rambling now. But the question coming into play, as a new person getting into FDM printing, what printer should you get? And I think it, it comes to the point of where you have the big, kind of like the big three in the auto world. You have Prusa, Bamboo, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe Creality, maybe Elegoo, somewhere around there. They're kind of jockeying for third place. Um, it, it comes to the point of where it's like you have hobby printing, you have people that are doing print farms and doing side gigs or just using their one or two printers to do some little side gig action. And then we get to a place where now you get into the print farms where you have people that have like four, five, six, seven, ten, or more, and their sole duty in life is to print stuff and sell it. And when you get into the business side of the house, of course, the longer it takes to print items, that's an expense that you're going to have to bear because you can't produce enough of those items quickly. The quicker you can print items at good quality, that's a better business idea overall because you can do more products in a shorter amount of time than you can with otherwise not doing it that way. Now, the big thing has been Bamboo X1C, the Bamboo uh, 1S or the, the P1P. Uh, have really come onto the market and really brought the 3D printing market, FDM market, kind of like what the iPhone did towards 
the cellular market. It ended up just being incredible and changing everything and people realizing, hey, wow, I can have one of these. I can pull it out of the box and, it, and I can 15, 20 minutes, I can print something. And so that is really appealing. We're getting to the place of where 3D printing is getting to be almost on the appliance level to where things are auto leveling. You have LiDAR scanning the first layers and adhesion to make sure, you know, they got anti-tilt and spaghetti, you know, errors that will notify you on your phone to stop the print so you don't lose a bunch of filament. And these things are becoming common. The one thing that we found is that as good as the Bamboo X1C is and the P1P, uh, P1S, and, you know, some other printers, uh, Prusa has been a big, big into the market with their bed slingers and so on and so forth. But generally, they've had smaller machines and they came, it was, they had like the Mark III and then they had the Mark IV. But they, now we're getting to the area, the time where people are like, yeah, I like my Bamboo, I like my Mark IV, I like this or that but I want a larger build plate and I want the high quality prints like we would get with the Bamboo X1C. Being able to print multi-materials and so on and so forth and really coming into its own where Bamboo has cornered the market on that with just great service and great prints. You know, very little time is spent, you know, dialing in and changing and fixing and modding and this and that as compared to like five or ten years ago. Now, I haven't been into 3D printing. When I first got interested, I'd say it was about ten years ago. And when I looked at it, I just saw that people were spending an inordinate amount of time fixing their machines and tweaking their machines, upgrading their machines versus actually printing stuff. And so I didn't want to get into this. So I kind of pushed all that aside and then I got into the resin printing thing and I'm like, because I had seen that it got to a place where yes, I would be able to do this. Now I've got some electronics background. I had some in the military. Uh, also after my retirement of the military, I got and worked as an electronics technician. So I did security cameras and, and uh, what did I did fiber optics, I did LAN, I, you know, internet connections and the whole nine yards. Uh, security doors, uh, control panels, you know, stun fences for prisons and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I've got a little bit of background on this. So there are definitely some times of where I've decided it's time to jump into the FDM printing market. The problem is I want something that's got a little bit of a bigger build area for a couple of reasons. One, as a hobbyist, I want to be able to get and build things on a larger build plate area so that I don't have to cut things in half or quarters or fifths or eighths or whatever and have to take a bunch of small parts and put them together versus maybe only printing one or two parts and putting them together and getting a really awesome print. So that's where the large build plate comes into play. The other thing I'm seeing is that perhaps, for me anyway, is there is a possible side gig for me to print things, sell things, and, you know, make a little coin on the side. So a larger build plate area would help facilitate that. Still don't want to shirk on the quality of the products. Still want to maintain a good speed for printing. And then, of course, we come into play of if you have a larger build plate and you have high quality and you have a good speed, now we come into the next area of multi-material printing. So with the Bamboo uh, X1C, it has their AMS, their automatic material system where you can print with different types of filament or you could have different types of colors of the same filament or different colors of different filaments or whatever it is and you can get some multicolor prints that are just kind of amazing. This is really good in bringing that 3D printing era of fixing and tinkering and maybe producing a benchy and maybe a little thing that was like, oh, isn't that kind of cute? You know, keychains and stuff like that. To now, we can get into functional products. We can get into more high-speed stuff that doesn't require a huge learning curve to get into. And so hobbyists are seeing this and they're saying, hey, I can print miniatures, I can print terrain, I can prevent, uh, print ships and this and that and cars and models and planes and uh, animals and whatever it is. I can do a ton of stuff with this stuff for my own satisfaction or for my own hobby purposes. And if I love doing it, 
why don't I do a little side gig? So that's kind of where I'm looking at this. So the big thing that I'm looking at is seeing what is coming up on the horizon and what printer I should buy. I've spent about the last year looking over, reading, studying the whole nine yards, watching an inordinate amount of videos on 3D printing. Uh, guys like Uncle Jesse, like guys like Grant from uh, 3DM, which is the 3D Musketeers guy, uh, has great shows and videos and so on and so forth and helps out a lot of people. I really like that. And a number of others. Kitchen CNC and, and uh, I mean, there's just, there's there's a ton of people that are reviewing products. Some of them are a little bit more biased than others and some of them are more honest in their assessments. So we get a wide variety of choices. But really what it comes down to me is I've kind of narrowed it down to a few things. And we're going to talk about those few things. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about here, if we can get on the screen, and we'll kind of do a little adjustment here. And what we end up seeing here is Creality. Creality is coming up. That is their Creality K2 Plus combo with an AMS, AMS system, or the, the CFS, the Creality, what is it, uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. It's it's multi-color printing system, the Creality, whatever it is. So anyway, but the cool thing about this is this is coming out, and Creality in the past has had some problems with its printers, and it's kind of like they, they, they rush to market, and the public sometimes ends up being beta testers is kind of what I see. You know, they're they're... They're not as good as bamboo. It's not highly polished. So hopefully through the past of what we've seen with Creality is that they learned their lesson. And with this larger size printer with a build area of 350 by uh, 350 cubed, as we see there for a build volume, that is pretty big because the bamboo X1C is 256 cube. So yeah, we're looking at a good build area. We're looking at a multi-material system that will come with this, and we're looking at about $1,500. Now on the pre-order, you can save some money if you can get those because they're only doing a certain amount, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, you can have up to 16 different colors if you have four of their AMS systems or their CFS Creality whatever system, filament system that they have. So, but with this right here, you're looking at, let's just say retail, $1,500 for a 350 cubes and with a four color AMS system. And it looks like it's some sort of, uh, it's got a display on there. So I'm going to assume it has like temperature. Maybe it has a dryer box, a heater box to keep your filament, which would be the next logical step, and we'll go into why I think that. But yeah, uh, heated. I think it has a heated chamber, closed loop motors, yeah, heated chamber. This is going to be a pretty good product if it can live up to uh, its claims. And so, and of course, it's just really weird why, why some of these websites that they make when they put the specs it just ends up it's either super small or it's really big so again we're having an fdm system a build area of 350 cubed it could be 110 or 220 so that's good for me because i retired and live in korea uh, the dimensions you can see there has a 4.3 color touch screen uh, combo rated power 1200 watts so that's kind of that's good supported filaments PLA ABS PTEG PA carbon fiber PET carbon fiber whatever that stuff is but it gives you a lot of options and my thinking is as somebody who's getting into FDM printing and been in a number of other hobbies in the past you can start off with a Barry Barney basic printer but what I found, if you really get the bug for that hobby, you're going to upgrade. And then you're going to upgrade, and then you're going to upgrade, and then you're going to upgrade. And if you tally up all of the money that you spent going from one better machine or upgrade or this or that to new machines, you should have just bought a machine with all the bells and whistles, cry once, buy once, and you would actually save some money. 
So that is my thinking behind this. You know, will I print in carbon fiber? Probably not. Or PETG or whatever it is. No, it'll probably be PLA, PLA plus, maybe ABS, something like that. But having the ability to print those other things just in case, let's say the, the hobby, I go from hobby to a little side gig and I, you know, I need to print or I want to print out or I find that I want to print out in these different materials, it would be better to have it and not need it than need it and have to buy another machine and pay more money than what I should. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I'm sure it does. Uh, what we end up seeing is 33.5 kilograms. We see a monitoring camera, uh, AI calibration, filament runout sensor, which is good. Printing speed is about 600 millimeters per second. But here's the danger with all of these speed claims for pretty much any company, you're going to have the max speed. Oh, this can go. It's kind of like a car. You know, this can hit 220 miles an hour. Are you really going to every day drive that 220 miles an hour? No, absolutely not. You're going to be driving the speed limit to be safe. And when we come to FDM printers, you're not going to be printing at 600 millimeters per second. Bamboo Labs and their X1C, they have some high numbers for their stuff. But in all honesty, from what I see online, to get and maintain good quality and decent speed, they're backing that down to around 250, 300 millimeters per second to maintain the quality. So really, when you see something that says, you know, oh, this can do a million miles an hour, what is your daily driver going to do? You're not going to do a million miles an hour. Now you can do a eight minute benchy or a six minute benchy or whatever it is. But the faster you go, generally, the quality is lower. So just realize, as a new person getting into FDM printing or even resin printing, um, max speed doesn't really come into play. You're going to have to back off and settle for less to get that better quality. Uh, auto filament backup. So in other words, if you're printing and a spool runs out, it will go to the next spool and it will automatically start up again. Uh, 30,000 millimeters per second squared for acceleration, which is good. But again, eh, you're, you're not going to go that fast. And it's not going to, you know, people see that and they're like, oh, wow, it's going to. No, it will only do it for small portions or long runs and then it'll have to slow down. It's the, the nature of the beast. So again, all of these speed claims are really kind of like things that you will never really do. Uh, air purifier, input shaping, which is really good because now it takes into account the vibration of the machine and it it kind of counteracts that so it can keep and go faster, which is good. That seems to be a standard by now. Uh, auto bed tilt calibration, uh, nozzle diameter, what I was talking about, 0.4 millimeters. That's usually the standard of what we end up seeing. Uh, uses Creality Print 5.0, and hopefully it will use some other slicing programs, kind of like Prusa or Orca or something like that. Uh, four filament max spools, heat bed temperature, RFID filament management is optional. Uh, G-code, uh, step servo motor, motor, motors, step servo motors, and uh, max CFS connection, which is going to be four, so it will give you those 16 colors. But when we're looking at this, again, we're just going to go off the price that you can get. The retail price of basically $1,500 is you're getting a 350 cube build area. And if with a four color AMS system or a CFS system, as they call it, for multi-material, and colors all the way up to 16 of course you'd have to pay more but to jump right in with such a large build area is really cool because now you're talking about people that want to do a side gig people that want to do cosplay armor people that want to do terrain for tabletop gaming maybe they want to build some other things where a larger build area would be beneficial this is not bad this is not bad at all so this is very interesting this and it hasn't come out yet you know, we've seen some videos, but they've just been real generic. And it's like, uh, until we get this into the hands of some reviewers, and I would love to review this. Um, yeah, I can't really, I wouldn't pull the trigger until we see what it can do. 
especially based on the past performance of Creality and some of their other machines in the past that didn't live up to the hype and had problems and so on and so forth. So yeah, I'm kind of hesitant. I am not that guy that's going to buy the first thing right out of the block. And I'm going to eat my words because we're going to talk about the FL Sun S1. <laughs> because I am seriously considering the FL Sun S1. Again, $1,500. This is a large printer. It does not have a multi-material system. It does have a place where you can put in a spool. It has a dryer uh, in there and a heater to, you know, keep your FDM material dry and cool or dry and not wet, whatever it is, which is beneficial for FDM printing. But the build area on this, now what we're seeing is a max speed of 1,200 uh, millimeters per second with a max speed and 40,000 millimeters per second of acceleration, which is probably the fastest. So I know you just heard me say, don't worry about the claims on the max speed that a machine can get. And again, like for example, the Bamboo X1C, it's 600, but you're going to ramp that bit down to around 300, 250, 300 is what I've seen a lot of people online say, hey, this is the sweet spot for quality and speed and for what we do for selling and producing things and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so that's kind of doable. The interesting thing, though, is if the speed on this is 1,200 millimeters per second, even if we drop this down to half and we can get five, you know, 600 millimeters per second and still get good quality prints, that would be way better than the Bamboo X1C. Even if we could just get, you know, like 500, 500 or 400 and get the same quality as a Bamboo X1C running at 300, you're going to be able to do more in less amount of time and have the same quality. So... That's where the speed thing does come into play, but we need to see more people doing reviews with the Bamboo X1C and the FL Sun S1. Now, the build area on this is 320 by 320 by 430, but at the very top, it kind of it has a conical shape towards the top. It's a circle, so it's not square. Eh, it is what it is. You're losing a little bit compared to, to the Creality, which is 350 by 350 build area, which is a square plate, but this is very interesting because it has a lot of different things that come with it. Max flow rate, 110 millimeters per second. Again, that is the max flow rate. Will you actually get that? Probably not if you're concerned about quality and that balance between quality and speed. Build area, again, you kind of see that little, uh, I think it's like 320 by 330 by 430. Uh, and you've got kind of a cone thing, so you're losing a little bit of space, but that's big enough to do a helmet and a lot of other things, and it's definitely larger than the Bamboo X1C, which is 256 cubed for a build area. Uh, AI intelligence, it's got a bunch of things here, but when we get to, let's see, we're looking at $1,500. Doesn't have a multi-material system on it, but what it does bring is, and from what I've seen so far, it brings speed and quality to the table that other machines haven't been able to do. And that's for the fact that this is a Delta style printer that is running off of Clipper, I would say Clipper-ish. <laughs> the, the, the software quality and attention to detail on software isn't, hasn't been the best with FL Sun in the past. Hopefully they learned their lesson in the past, their mechanics and the sturdiness of the machine and all of that on the hardware side of the house is just outstanding. This, if they can marry those two things up and get the software side squared away and they can really make this to where it's 100% clipper and people can get in there and, you know, the, the geeks can just tweak it to death and whatever they want to do, this could be a serious contender. The only problem that I see is that we don't have an AMS system. In other words, you're going to have to run one spool at a time. I think you can also put another spool on the outside. But, ah, yeah, it's missing an, a an AMS system. And for $1,500, ah, we've seen videos of the, of the S1, and it performs pretty well. 
But again, it doesn't have the AMS system. So in my context of getting into FDM printing, I would want to shoot my load for a large build area with a four color material system that can be expanded upon later on in case I want to do a side gig, I would go for the K2 plus combo, but it hasn't come out yet, so we don't know. The FL Sun has come out and has some real good results, but now we're left kind of one step behind because we don't have a multi-material system. By the way, if anybody knows of a third-party multi-material system that some company has made that it just, boom, there it is, and you can hook it up to another printer or any type of printer that runs like Clipper or whatever that could be added on to this, then we're talking about some, some serious consideration of, okay, well, hmm, what are we going to do now? If we go on and we continue on all this, uh, you know, it puts out eight-minute benchies, but again, you're not going to do eight-minute prints. It goes really fast. It comes out kind of decent, but the amount of time that this prints at is like double the speed of a Bamboo X1C in some of the videos that I've been seeing with similar quality. So again, there's always going to there's going to be some times where you need to tweak your settings, uh, the temperature of your bed, the flow rate, and so on and so forth to be able to get the optimal uh, print quality and, and speed to get a good product out. That comes with any type of machine, but this is look really good. The only problem with this is that it is terribly loud because it has a CPAP fan that does 40,000 RPMs. And if you've seen any of the videos on the S1, good Lord, it's like running a vacuum cleaner. So now we're faced with noise. It prints fast. It has some good quality, but it's going to be noisy. So is that going to be something that you can live with? Is this going to be in a basement? Is it going to be in your garage where you don't mind the noise? Or in my situation, I live in an apartment. Are my neighbors going to like having a vacuum cleaner running 24-7? I don't know. You know, what? probably, I know I probably wouldn't want that. And there's people that have already kind of put like sound baffles on this thing to quiet it down, but still maintain the, the fan. Uh, you know, maybe you'll have to, to splurge and make an enclosure to soundproof it, but still allow air in. You know, we're talking venting and so on and so forth, pushing air in, pulling air out. I'm, I'm not sure how that, would, how that would work. So that's another, that's another thing that bothers me because it's like, well, I would do the S1, but there's these other considerations because of where I live. Other people, it's not a problem. So yeah, it's got LiDAR, it's got AI detection, auto leveling, that seems to be a big thing now. That, that needs to be the standard. There's no longer, if you're messing with a machine that takes manual leveling, uh, that's going the way of the dodo. It's, it's just going away. So this is it. Uh, yeah, and what we end up seeing here is, uh, yeah, it just looks like a really, really good machine. So we're left with that. Now, another contender in the large build plate arena is Prusa XL. Now, the original Prusa, Prusa, Joseph Prusa has done bed slingers and so on and so forth. It was a Mark III and Mark IV, and he's got a bunch of other stuff too. But the XL is a large single tool head 3D printer that... Yeah, we're looking at a build area of 360, what is it, 360 by 360, uh, it's 360 cubed, I think it is. Let me see if we can f scroll down here, which is a great, uh, where it is, uh, zero printing waste, minimal waste, an extruder, tool changer, so you can have multiple heads. So it doesn't have an AMS system, but it does have where you could have individual spools and material on each print head and you can have a total of five. That's kind of good. Uh, power loss recovery, so in other words, the power goes out and it comes, power comes back on because, of, I don't know, maybe you live in California and the brownouts and everybody wants an electric car but their grid can't handle the current electrical load during the summer. 
go figure. That might be a thing. So this power loss recovery would be uh, an added benefit. That's definitely a good thing. First layer calibration, supportive materials, uh, Prusa slicer, which is a lot of companies have actually taken that open source slicer and used it and made their own little version. Uh, but yeah, this is 360 cubed. So you're talking 14.17 inches cubed, a square of, let me see, we're talking about 14.7, which is basically this right here. I mean, that's, I'd say about that right there. That's a good build area. So let's see, we get it right there, there, you know, we're talking there. We can get some good prints. And the thing is, people have been asking for a large print, build print area for FDM printing for a while. Now we've had Elegoo and we've had some other companies come out with their bed slingers or, you know, whatever printers that they put out, Core XY or whatever. But in the past, those printers have just been, in my opinion, rushed to market. And there's people that get good printers and then there's people that have constant problems. So it still seems we're, we're, we're not in the area of you're buying an appliance, you plug it in, 20 minutes later you're, you're doing prints and it's working. I think those were rushed to market and trying to compete, try to get one step ahead of Bamboo and maybe some other companies, and it just didn't work out for them. So really, with that, hopefully the future larger build areas on FDM printers will concentrate on quality, will concentrate on all of these different bells and whistles, that will be standard. Now, the problem with this, you can have up to five tool head changes. Now for this, this is insane. I mean, Prusa has got some incredible material. So you have just one print head, so you're gonna have one spool on here, one type of material, kind of FL Sun, you're gonna have one spool and that's gonna be it. Uh, the good thing is you could have larger spools. The FL Sun, you could only have a one kilo uh, spool in the dryer box, so you're kind of limited in that aspect. But for one, tool head, semi-assembled, which is cheaper, you're going to be paying two grand. I love the build area, but the problem is it doesn't have an enclosure. So what are the options of printing in other materials if I wanted to at a future date? I, where, where's the enclosure? Can you know, I, and that's a lot of money. Now, granted, Prusa has put out some awesome products in the past, and they have been workhorses. There are people that have a print farms of nothing but Mark Threes, and now they have Mark Fours, and they're just solid workhorses. They're easy to fix, and so on and so forth. Uh, customer service is good, but yeah, it's it's too grand. I don't know many hobbyists that would pay too grand. I, you know, going back to the FL Sun, I could pay fifteen hundred dollars with the 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 K two plus. You know, I could pay fifteen hundred dollars for that. I'd probably go for the K two if it lived up to its claims over the FL Sun S one. But when you're talking about two grand for a hobbyist just to get into a hobby, yeah, that's a lot of bones to to shell out for a hobby. You know, now maybe if you were already into 3D printing and you're producing products and selling products and you have a real good side gig, this might be beneficial and you could justify that price. But even then, it's very questionable because let's say if we want to be able to print with, let's see, the number of extruders, now we're looking at $2,500 with two print heads. So we'd be able to do like two colors, but compared to the four color, Hmm. But if you go for all five, you're going to add another thousand dollars on top of that. So you'd be able to, and I think the other spool is over on the, the, the side there or the back, but you're talking $3,500 for a five tool head system. And there's some people that have had some great results with this, but the problem that they bring out as well is that there's no enclosure. Supposedly, Prusa is supposed to come out with an enclosure for this thing, but it it's kind of went the way of the dodo, no one's ever seen or heard of it since, and that is problematic. It seems like the company is saying, hey, well, let's get this to market, and then they don't follow through on things that people would say, hey, well, I'm buying this because they're going to come out with an enclosure so that I can print with all of these other materials, and now we're stuck with a 
$3,500 open area printer that I can't print those things unless I build my own enclosure, which, you know, now you're looking into materials and building and spending and so on and so forth. So, you know, it wouldn't be unreasonable to, you know, your $3,500, maybe $4,000, $4,500 to get everything set up to build an enclosure and enclose this monstrosity. Uh, yeah, I just don't see the average hobbyist or even somebody that wants to start out doing a side gig with 3DM printing, uh, FDM printing, spending that much money for this. I just don't see it. So, uh, yeah, do you just go back and you say, well, I'm just going to do two print heads? Well, it's still $2,500. And the thing that bothers me is I've seen some videos of this XL with people who have gotten bricks and they just get errors after errors after errors. And to be honest, there's other, there's a, more people have better results than that. They have good, you know, good results with their, their equipment, their XLs, but it's not, it, it's still, it would cause me to pause and reflect on life in general by dishing out $2,500 and then having to go through the hassle like one guy, uh, he bought it. He got the five print heads, the whole nine yards, and some other stuff. And this is semi-assembled. So let's say you, you got, let's take a look at this. So let's say you do the five print heads so that you can do five colors, five materials, so on and so forth. That's $3,500. But that's semi-assembled. So you're going to have to spend time. And from what I've seen in videos online, it takes six to eight hours or so to build this thing. What happens if you buy it assembled? That's another uh, you're looking at four grand. That that is some steep. That's a steep price to play, uh, price to pay. And I just I I think they're pricing themselves out of the market. And especially when you look at the K2 Plus combo or other systems that have a, a multi-material system to them, like the Bamboo X1C, and the price differences. It's like well, eh, I for the price that I can get. A bamboo X1C, you know, four grand, I could buy two with two AMS systems on it. And I, hmm? yeah, it's let's take a look at uh, bamboo X1C. So the X1 series, this is going to be really interesting. Let's just go to the store. We go to 3D printers, and we'll go to the X1C with the combo, which is uh, $1,200, $1,300. It's even gone down in price. It used to be basically $1,500, $1,450. Now it's down to $1,300. So yeah, compare that to that. Hmm. So basically four grand. Let's see, what do we end up here? Four grand. And you're going to have, this doesn't take into account shipping or the VAT tax that you will have to pay because this comes from Europe. Uh, and the bamboo is, what, $1,300? Divide that by $1,300. You could buy three bamboo X1Cs. Wow. For the price of this right here with the five tool head and be able to print five colors. You could get three of these. Yeah, if you're talking about doing a side gig, why settle for one machine that costs you 4K when you can get three machines with a included AMS systems that can print multiple colors and you could have three machines chunking out parts and pieces and making profit for you versus the one that is only going to print out what it can on the build plate. Now, with that being said, you could set up multiple items on this build plate, and I think you could end up having, like, multiple print heads printing the same thing, you know, kind of doing it in lockstep. So depending on, on how you arrange your prints on there, say you're doing a bunch of little dragons or figures or whatever, you could do that. But it's not going to have the same bang for the buck as you would with a Bamboo X1C Carbon with three of those with the AMS system on each of them. 
And even then, it's like, now you've got three AMS systems, you could actually end up having, what, three times four is 12, 12 different colors available. I, wow, hmm, talk about options. So, yeah, that's where I think the uh, Prusa and the Prusa XL has kind of priced themselves out of the market. But then again, they can do some really cool stuff with the XL and those five print heads when it's working. But I think without the enclosure, I think they've lost their way in regards to what the rest of the market is doing. I think they, you know, they've been at the head of the pack for so long. You know, they got tons of machines out there. They got customer service and the whole nine yards. Heard, just heard so much great stuff about Prusa. <coughs> then I thought about getting an, X, uh, an MK4, but in larger print areas or build areas, uh, this they just price themselves out of the market. So there needs to be something. And again, when we're looking at the K2 Plus combo, we're looking at about you know $1,500, the FL Sun, we're looking about the same thing, thing $1,500, and then we're jumping up to here like, you know, three, four grand. That just, for me, as a hobbyist, if I was just doing a hobby thing and doing cosplay on my own and tabletop gaming or whatever, there's no way I would buy the XL. It just, I could just not justify the cost of that. I would do the Bamboo Labs X1C. I would do the, the FL Sun. I would do the K2 Plus. Actually, I would do the K2 Plus. Then I would do the Bamboo Lab X1C, even though it has a smaller build area. Then I would do the FL Sun S1. But now comes the wild card. The wild card comes into play with Bamboo Lab teases a 3D printer and plans for larger devices. Now, this was in May of 2024, which is, you know, it's, what, almost the end of June now. But this is interesting. Multicolored printing, uh, like the Prusa XL, for example, Bamboo Lab hinted at a new generation of 3D printer to be launched this year with a wink. So are we going to see multiple head printing, kind of like the Prusa, but at a lower price? Obviously, it's going to be at a lower price than what Prusa is putting out, because if they can do that, then they can get a huge market share of people that would say, you know, well, I can't justify spending four grand, but if I could get a multi-head 3D printer, like a four-head printer or something like that, and it comes up to like two grand-ish, that's a, with an AMS system, that's, I could do that all day long. I could justify, I could eat that, buy once and cry once, and I would be good to go. Uh, some other things that came out on this is they intend to directly compete with the XL, which offers individual tool heads for each material. The configuration saves time as materials can be switched almost instantly during printing. Now, with the Bamboo Labs X1C, what happens if you're going to use the AMS system? It's going to take that material, and it prints in that color of that material, whatever it is, and then if it has to change to another material or color, the print head needs to go over, it needs to purge itself of that color, and then the other color or material comes into there, and then it had, that has to run so that you don't get any... Uh, staining or anything like that so there's a lot of filament waste it's getting better over time but then it, that single head has to go back and boom go back to the print which takes time with a single head type of machine but with the Prusa XL what we end up seeing is that you can have different materials on each print head or different colors with each one so let's say if you're doing black and this tool head goes down with the black boom it does everything it does and the next thing it needs some white this tool head has white it goes down you don't need to purge and wait and clean and any of that stuff it's just like chip, 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 and boom it goes so that increases your print time which is pretty amazing if Bamboo gets onto this at a cheaper price than Prusa XL, oh yeah, it, Prusa's going to, uh, there was another guy that did a video that I was watching saying that Prusa's going to go the way of the BlackBerry. And even though there's still Blackberries out there and people use them, I think that's a 100% a true assessment of what can happen to Prusa because they will be left behind. 
Now, you will always have fanboys for whatever company there is out there, you know, Bamboo fanboys, Prusa fanboys, this and that, whatever. But when faced with new people coming into the, into the community of FDM printing, when you see somebody can say, hey, I can get this with a larger build area with multiple heads and so on and so forth, and it's within a certain price range that I might cringe a little bit, but that cringe leads to some great returns and I get added value, yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer. People will leave the Prusa XL and why spend four grand when I can get this for $2,500, you know, or $2,300 or something like that versus four grand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what we're getting down to. Uh, RFID, larger A1 machine. They said how they're not going to be doing that. Uh, da, 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 software integration, uh, da, 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 larger machine. Here it is, folks. This is why I've been hesitant on buying a machine. Now, if I was going to buy a machine, it would probably, if I was concerned with a budget, I would go with the Bamboo P1S. If I had a little bit more money, which, you know, when we're talking about the Bamboo Lab, we're talking about $1,300 for that right there. That's not bad. I would go, the next one I would go for would be the X1C. Again, the build area is 256 cubed, but I, I would eat that. But because we've seen other companies like Elegoo come out with some larger style, uh, larger build plate area machines, but they just didn't perform as well as kind of like the Bamboo series of products with their P1S, P1P, and the X1C, I, I knew Bamboo was coming out with this. It just made total sense because what did we end up seeing? I, I'm into resin printing and I got the Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra. At the time, it was like, hey, this is a great machine, seeing reviews on it. I pulled the trigger and I got it, and it is a great machine. But next thing you know, what pops up? The next machine, the Saturn IV Ultra, which has auto leveling and a bunch of bells and whistles and tilting bed and faster print times and so on and so forth. The FDM community and companies will always have that problem. The next year comes out or the half year or the year and a half, you'll have a newer model with more bells and whistles at a, at a good price point. And it's just like, uh, but with this, when I started looking into printers, because I figure buy once, cry once, I want a larger build plate area, but I don't want to get something like the Elegoo Giga, which is so massively huge, which is what, $1,300, $1,400. It is huge, but I saw that thing was going to be a brick because it had four separate build plates on it. And it's like, yeah, you couldn't even come up take the time to have one solid build plate and the uh, leveling and this, and there's just too many problems with that to, being such a huge printer. Yeah, cross that off the list. It's too big. It's not something that would appeal to hobbyists and people that are looking at getting into a side gig of 3D FDM printing products or doing print services. But this, a larger machine, uh, currently, the X1C will be superseded by a larger machine. Bamboo Lab doesn't say anything specific other than we're working on it. They also can't say which series it'll belong to. This suggests that they might have another letter series, like L for large. Um, but yeah, this is very interesting and effectively confirms that a large Bamboo Lab machine is in the works. It may be that they've seen other companies profit in large format printing and they wish to join. Uh, yeah, they also noticed the Elegoo Giga machine, which is available at a low cost, but it seems to me that's a it's a brick. There's too many people that have problems with it. It seems to me that it was rushed to market. It wasn't really put a, a lot of thought into quality, and they just wanted to be the first one out there. So, yeah, I when I heard about the gig, I was like, wow, that's interesting. And then when I saw it, and then I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work at all. That's going to be a that's going to be a big problem for Elegoo, and it's going to go the way of the dodo, unless they do some serious retooling. And even then, the Giga is leaving bad taste in people's mouths to the point of where it's like, yeah, ah, it's not even a consideration. And again, the the monumentally huge build plate area for that is so far out of the norm and so far past larger print build area 
it's just a small niche, and I don't think they're going to sell a lot of those things. It's not going to appeal to the hobbyist or the somebody that might want to get into a side gig. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you could buy a couple of Bamboo X1Cs with the AMS on it, and boom, you could be doing a side gig, and you're good to go, even with just one machine. But the larger build plate area and the AMS is kind of the place of where we're at. And seeing that Bamboo is working on a larger series, especially if it's going to have something, I think they'll come out with two machines. In my guesstimation, I think Bamboo Lab will come up with a machine, a larger Bamboo X1, X1C, which is basically going to be a... A bigger version. I think if they went with a 360 uh, cubed build area with an AMS system, in other words, just blowing up the X1C, I think that would be awesome. And then I think their other machine that they will come out with, just by looking to see what Prusa did and based off of this AMA thing, this whatever this was, uh, whatever AMA means, I don't know, whatever, ask me anything, uh, yeah, I think it'll come to the place where they'll have a larger X1C with maybe at least a 350, maybe a 360 cubed build area. And then I think for a multi-tool head machine, if they can get into maybe the same build area with that type of machine, with an enclosure, printing all the high-speed materials with a heated chamber and so on and so forth, and then throw on the uh, an availability of having a larger dry box filament drying system, I, that would be huge. But then again, I think something like that would probably cost a bit more because you're having multiple tool heads on there. Let's say you have four, I don't know, I don't think you need five tool heads. I think four would be good. I think four would be a good tool head to have. And if Bamboo went with four, I don't see the reason why you have five. Of course, then I'm you know fairly new into this world of 3D printing, but based off of my uh, electronics and, and background that I've had in the military and, of course, working with the Department of Corrections as an electronics technician and doing control panels and automatic doors and cameras and all kinds of cool stuff, stun fences, fiber optics computers, I really don't see why Prusa picked five. I think it's just because they picked five because they could fit five. So, And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think if Bamboo comes up with a four tool head system, it'll bring that price point down. It'll be affordable. And you could do multi-color or multi-material in a heated chamber. Yeah, I think that would... Ah, oh, man, the Bamboo X1C is basically 13 It was basically $1,500 when it came out, but now it's $1,300. For one, I would say if they did a four-tool head with an AMS system, heated chamber, all of that good stuff, more bells and whistles, I think about two grand ish that would be... That would be, even up to $2,500, that would steal away a ton of customers from Prusa. And that would really solidify them, especially if they can get the quality, especially if they can get the speed. Uh, speed is a big thing. And, of course, if you have multi-heads on your machine, then you don't have to worry about purging and pooping and reloading and then going in and, and doing the next color and then stopping and then doing the same thing over again. If you had four tool heads going with an AMS system and a heated chamber and you could do multiple materials, yeah, 22, 2,300, 2, I, I could spend 2,500 for that. It would hurt. It would hurt. I, I would cringe at that. But it's at the point where it's like the benefits that you would get would far outweigh, especially if you're going to do a side gig type of thing. Boom. So instead of buying like three bamboo, you know, three or four bamboo lab X1Cs, you could end up doing one of these. Uh, and again, it's, it's kind of complicated. 
you have one machine that can do multiple heads, uh, you know, kind of like the Prusa XL, or do you buy just three of the Bamboo Lab X1Cs and get more parts out? I, you know, there's you have that opportunity to boot to do both, but I think with a larger build area and doing four tool heads will be, I, I'm I'm going to look into my Magic Mocha Vanilla Latte and and see. I think bamboo, just just a wild guess on my part, I think it'll have four tool heads. I think it'll have heated chamber and all that stuff, bells and whistles, AMS system that will be improved upon from their previous AMS. And, yeah, I think that will that will just take the wind out of Prusa sales with the XL, uh, especially at a lower price point. So I think a lot of things are going to come on the market for bamboo, and especially since it's 2024, it's already almost the end of June. It's 24 June right now. So bamboo's got a little ways to go, so I expect to hear some things in the next few months, maybe getting ready for Christmas. I don't know. We'll hear some more rumors. Usually you hear more rumors towards the end-ish part of the year, so we might hear rumors by the end of the year, and then maybe by early next year we will get some more models from bamboo coming out larger build plate, multi-head system, uh, multi-print head systems, and so on and so forth. So really, there'll be no excuse. And Bamboo will be the one-stop shop for hobbyists, for people that are going from hobbyists to side gigs, and then people that are doing side gigs that want more. Yeah, uh, and especially being the iPhone of the 3D printing world, I think, this is where they're going to go. And if they can improve their speed a little bit more, uh, especially with the multi-head system and so on and so forth, and with the next version of a larger build plate, even with a single head, if they can get that speed up faster, I think Bamboo will do a Delta printer? I don't think so. You never know. I don't think they would. But, yeah, that's I'm going to wait. I'm definitely going to wait and see what happens later this year. Now I might buy a machine just so I can get started, but maybe that will be like the A1, the Bamboo A1, that will have a 256 build plate with, you know, four color system just to dip my toe into the waters, and then I will spend a larger amount of money on a bigger machine. I don't know. It's It looks just very interesting on what's going to be coming out. <sighs> So it'll be in. the first thing that we can expect to see is the K2 Plus. Really looking forward to seeing some videos of this beast coming out and the quality and unboxing and reviews. If it does well, this could I, I could be buying this right here. I could be buying the, that Creality K2 Plus. As much as I love the S1, the FL Sun S1. Uh, as being a Delta printer and it being fast and good and being able to have high print speeds, but even if you back it off, it will still print faster than the Bamboo X1C. Uh, that is huge. The only problem is there's no AMS. And I think, uh, I think FL Sun, I think what they ended up doing is they shot themselves in the foot. They came out with, you know, they worked, they had their V400 and, and the Speed Racer or whatever, the other models that they had, and they went back to the drawing board and they said, hey, well, we're going to make the S1, and the S1 is going to have its own filament dryer above, and it's going to be a Delta printer, it's going to be even faster, and so on and so forth. But they forgot that, yeah, this, they're like a day late and a dollar short, to be honest with you. Because there's no AMS system. I think they're so concerned about getting something fast and a one-stop shop thing, and they didn't realize that people want more than just one spool of filament and that multi-filament or multi-material printing is now becoming more widespread, and that kind of bit them in the ass a little bit. So, But with that being said, they have the T1. Let's take a look at the T1. I wasn't going to do this, but let's take a look at the T1, which is kind of a, a smaller version, and it's only $600. It doesn't have the material 
you know, the uh, filament dryer on the box, on the top, but we're still getting, you know, a thousand millimeters per, se uh, per second max speed, 30,000 with acceleration. Again, that, that's, to that's way better. Even if you cut it in half, it's still way better than the Bamboo X1C if you cut it, had to cut those times in half. Uh, enclosure, auto leveling, vibration compensation, we're getting all of these things and for $600, that's not bad either. That's, I mean, hmm. And really, if you think about it, do am I going to pay an extra, you know, almost double to get the S1 when I can just get the T1 and I can get a filament dryer box and have that just dry my filament and run that up to the machine. I don't know, maybe the T1 sounds better, but I think where they really drop the ball is that they don't have a multi-material system that can be used with either one of these. You know, it's great that they did. I, I love the idea of a Delta printer. I like the fact that it goes fast. I think it is really good, but the missing component, the missing puzzle, puzzle piece is puzzle piece is there's no AMS. That that would have been the thing. And if a company can come out with a third-party AMS system that could work with like the T1 or the S1 or any other printer, that will be huge. And so there's money to be made. But again, you have companies like Bamboo that have already gotten into this area with their AMS systems. And uh, yeah... I mean, you can put the, the spool in there. It's like a one kilo spool, but it doesn't have a dryer box or anything. You could throw in some desiccant up at the top to kind of dry that out. So, I mean, that's absolutely doable. But the thing is, you don't have, and the build plate is 260 by 330, which is still, eh, it's a smaller build plate area. But again, I think they missed out by not doing an AMS system. So the build volume, excuse me, is 260 by 330. <sighs> Bed, motor, build plate. I don't think it has a heated chamber. Spaghetti detection and all that stuff. Yeah, um, it's. I think it's going to come down to the battle, the battle of the beds, and I think it's going to come down to the battle of the AMS in all actuality to bring out a good product that has the balance of speed, quality, and I, I, I guess materials and colors that you can print with. And I think the, the company that comes out that can nail those three areas, they're going to dominate the market if they can live up to the, to the claims of what they can do and if they have good customer service. That, that's that's like the fourth leg of the chair for, for 3D printing, in my opinion, is quality, speed, uh, material, and customer service. Because there's some machines out there that are good, but people have ended up getting bricks, and the customer service of the company just ends up being so bad that people are just like, I want my money back. And I don't blame them. I, you know, if you have a company that does not have good customer service, when they sell you a brick... Yeah, I'll never touch that company. So, but yeah, build area, AMS, quality, speed, all of those things will come into play. Customer service. So, I, so it comes down to five. Okay. Instead of a four-leg chair, we're going to have a five-leg chair. So, yeah, very interesting on, on what is coming out on the market. And I'm definitely going to be waiting, even though I want to buy an FDM printer so bad. Again, I might have to go back to Bamboo. How much is their A1? Just to satisfy my jonesing. Let's see. Printers. Let's take a look at the printers. Take a look and see what we have. So, maybe we can make this a little bit bigger. So, their A1 is $339. Seriously, the A1 Mini is $200. That dropped in price. It used to be three hundred. Now it's down a hundred dollars. You have the A1, which used to be four hundred, basically. Now it's three thirty-nine. 
That is a 4 ANS system. And what about the P1S? Oh my gosh, look at this, 599. That is kind of like the X1C, but half the price, and you're still getting an AMS system on there. It used to be... <laughs> Okay, so it's eight eight forty nine. If you just got the P one S by itself, it's five ninety nine. So basically six hundred dollars. So if you get this as a combo with the AMS, you're looking at eight hundred forty nine dollars. I don't know that that's a bit much. But to just dip my toe in, would I get a P one S combo for eight hundred fifty dollars, or would I get the A one? which has four on there. Again, a bed slinger, it's not bad. 256 cube build area. It's got the heated cable thing since they did the recall and all that stuff, but you were able to print four colors. Hmm, hmm. That's not bad, and that, that works pretty well. Multicolor printing, active flow recompensation, auto calibration, that's important. Uh, active no motor noise canceling, multicolor, active flow rate compensation, quick swap nozzle, that's good, noise canceling, bed slinger, core XY, good quality. Let's see, what materials can we print with this? Let's see, uh, build play temperature. Supported materials is PLA, PETG, TPU, and PVA is ideal. Not recommended for ABSA, ABS, ASA, PC, PA, and PET. Carbon fiber, glass reinforced products. Still, that right there. Hmm. As a camera, the camera sucks, unfortunately. Runout sensor, yes. Filament odometry, power loss recovery, yes. Filament tangle sensor, yes. Mm, interesting, interesting to what we have. So maybe, maybe I'll dip my toe with this. That's $489. And that could tide me over until the larger bamboo comes out. Ah, larger build plate area. Yeah, because oh, this is the price point of where it's like, oh, man, that is entirely doable. Oh, oh, what would that be on, since I live in Korea... Uh, let's see. Uh, well, let's just do it this way. We'll just go on Naver because I use Naver because I live in Korea. Now I'm just kind of rambling. So here is Naver, the Bamboo X1C, and I just want to show you kind of what we got going on here. So we'll go to shopping. Naver is kind of like the... Uh, Amazon of Korea, that and Coupang. So let's see, we end up here. Uh, use neighbor pay. 396,000. Okay, bamboo one, 600 and basically 650. Uh, there's 570, 557. 699, 613. So let's just say 613. So 613,001. And we divide that by basically 1,351 per dollar. We're looking at $454. Wow. Now, I'll, I wonder if there's any of these that are, like, ready to ship. Because a, a lot of stuff. Well, there's that one. Oh, but that doesn't come with the multicolor. But that one's got the little thing. Oh, no. 
Chunba, which means kind of like it's in country and they can deliver it quickly. <sighs> inner pork, inner pork. Nope, 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 nope. I'll just do one more page to look at this. But that's not bad. 450 bucks. It might take a couple weeks to get here, but there's one for 425,000. It's overseas. 425,000 divided by 1350. $314? Seriously? Oh, I could do that. And then you get some crazy, crazy ones here. 517, what was that one? 425? 425, that might be the lowest one. 435, 726, no, no, no. 571, that's just the AMS. We'll just do one more page here. But the good thing is, we've got a lot of products, a lot of stuff that I can purchase for repair parts, so on and so forth. I don't know. That might be... Wow. Come on. There we go. Translate the page. Bamboo Lab, Correction FDM High Speed Multicolor. Yeah. 425. Ah, wow. I've got some accumulated points, so it would be about 412,000. Oh, that's a mini combo. I don't want a mini combo. Seriously. Ah. Anyway, next set. So, ah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we got going on. So, yeah, I, hmm, maybe I'll get the A1. Maybe I'll get the A1 to keep me from jonesing and that will sustain me of doing some things and then I can wait a little bit until Bamboo comes out with their larger print machine or multi-print head machine and that will also give time for the K2, Creality K2 Plus to come out and see how those work. Uh, unfortunately, FL Sun doesn't have a, an AMS, so I think they're going to be in third place. And then Prusa XL has just priced themselves out of the market. That's not even a consideration for me. Yeah. But at least maybe the A1 <clears throat> would keep me satisfied until... Mm, but then, I don't know. Maybe the P1P... Or the P1S. P1S. Because that's enclosed. 16 colors as AMS. It's only 850. Ah, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I could ramble on a little bit more. But with that being said, what do you all think in regards to large print bed area machines? And if you have a larger machine or a machine that has a larger build area, what company is it? Why do you like it? Has it been good? Has it been bad? You know, you look back and, and when you bought it, did it live up to the hype? Or is it something that you've had to tinker and play with? Have you, did you get a brick? Did you have to send it back and get a new one? Uh, put your experiences and what has happened to you and put that in the comment section down below. Uh, and the recommendations of why you think the printer that you got Obviously, if it works well, you you know you, you would recommend it, but why you think that would be a good printer. And for kind of within the confines of me being a new to FDM printer and possibly doing a side gig, why do you think the system that you have would fill those goals or those standards that I have? Uh, I'd love to see that in the comment section down below. All righty, that's going to be it. Ah, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Anyway, I know this is a long video, but I think it was worth doing, and I really enjoy the FDM printing and reading and studying and all this stuff. And again, I don't have an FDM printer, but I've done enough electronics work in the past that I know what to look for in regards to, and of course now with YouTube and social media, you got people that, oh, here's this printer, 
and it sucks. It's a you know it's a brick. Don't buy it. You know, and you get tons of people having the same opinion. Yeah, you're not going to go for those machines. So part of the pre-sorting or you know kind of narrowing the field of what printers to get or not get has already been done by social media. So now we can really get to the meat of the matter. <sighs> I. What would you think down below? I'd really love to hear what you have to say. So, with that being said, be sure to like and subscribe to the video. I would really, really appreciate it if you would do that. And we will see you on the next video. Okay? Peace. Man. Ah. Oh. Awesome.